Hi there, uh, everybody watching this, wherever you are around the world. Um, I just wanted to come to you um, and share with you a few of the thoughts, uh, a few of the things that I experienced uh, over the last weekend. Uh, I had a truly unbelievably powerful, meaningful and important experience out in Albania. Uh, something that really shocked me, uh, an experience that I truly wasn't expecting to have. You know, I'd heard about Albania uh, and I'd heard somewhere, once upon a time, uh, about the story of the Albanian righteous. Um, but it sort of connected with the other stories that we'd heard in the past and I didn't know to differentiate or how or what their story was or really too much about it. But what I had was this opportunity to go there and to visit and to meet with these remarkable people. And what I found in Albania was something that honestly uh, has changed my life. Uh, it's a big statement, uh, and it's a statement that kind of uh, you'll hear a lot of people sometimes make, but really the experience I had in, out, in, out in Albania was something that, that I sort of have to share with all of you here. Um, meeting righteous monks and nations, and in Albania there are only three of them who are still alive, um, three recorded and registered righteous monks and nations, is always a very powerful experience. Uh, it's amazingly powerful for me every single time, every day, um, that Oliver and Veronica and all of our wonderful people at From the Depths deal with the righteous here in Poland, uh, with the free rides that we give them with the From the Depths taxis, uh, and all the other things that we do to help them and, and tell their stories and so on and so forth. It's always a powerful and amazing experience. But being out in Albania was kind of shocking to me. Um, you know, I, I grew up uh, in London, England, as, as all of you know, um, and then lived in Israel, I served in the Israeli army, and my upbringing was focused obviously around my Jewish faith, and around who I am as a Jew, and around being a Jew, uh, and everything connecting to that. And I never, uh, sort of understandably, really paid too much attention or understanding to other people's religious practices, or, or what different religions meant. Uh, it just was never a factor for me personally. Um, being here in Poland, obviously, I had this remarkable opportunity um, to see uh, and meet with the uh, righteous here in Poland. And as a result of that, I uh, actually got to understand a lot of the culture here as well. You know, the amount of, of ceremonies I've been in, for example, to mass, you know, unfortunately, funerals often of the righteous. Being to these ceremonies and these religious ceremonies enabled me to understand and see the beauty and understandable power in their religion. Um, and, you know, and every religion has its different paths and purposes and everything that comes with that. Um, and really, I was able to see that here in Poland. But what I saw in Albania was, was remarkably surprising because even after speaking uh, with one of the righteous in a recording that's remarkably powerful that I'll be sharing hopefully uh, with all of you uh, over the next week, in this recording I asked him, um, I asked him why he did what he did. Why did he and his family step up to save the life of someone else? Uh, and someone else who isn't one of theirs, uh, who isn't uh, a Muslim, he doesn't subscribe to that faith. And they told me, Johnny, we did it because of our religion. We did it because that's our way of viewing our religion, our way of viewing Islam, and, and this is the reason why we did what we did. And, to hear that was, was really so powerful um, because, like everything today, we like to sort of grab everybody and throw them into boxes. And, and we love to make stereotypes. Making stereotypes is something that all of us do all the time. You know, certain people are like this, certain people are like that. E even today, uh, today I was, um, I won't say exactly what, but I was negotiating something for an upcoming event that we have at From the Depths. I was negotiating the price of a certain thing. And in the negotiations for the price of this certain thing, um, yeah, I was pushy, you know, it's the foundation's money, it's not my personal money. I take very good care of making sure that every penny is spent how it's meant to be. And the gentleman turns around to me at the end after, you know, pushing him pretty hard, rightly so, and he says, oh, you Jews are great at negotiating. Now, I laughed. It personally doesn't bother me, but my immediate reaction was goodness. I mean, imagine if that was a lot of other people. It'd be quite shocking. Uh, it'd be quite a difficult thing for a lot of people to hear. Um, and so really, again, we like to stereotype. We love to put people in boxes. We like to say, this person's like that, that person's like this. 
But being in Albania and spending time with these amazing people and meeting with the former foreign minister whose family was responsible for saving Jews, they were so quiet about this story. It only came up a few years ago when Israel's foreign minister was visiting in Albania. Uh, Avigdor Lieberman, uh, who is pretty well known now for a lot of different reasons, but Avigdor Lieberman was visiting back then Albania. And he was meeting with the Albanian foreign minister at the time. And the Albanian foreign minister, in small talk before negotiations, brought up this fact. He said, you know what? Actually, we have a story. My family has a story. They were responsible for saving Jews. And they were kind of shocked with this scenario. And so Lieberman asked for information, went, checked it, and it was true. Everything was correct. And Yad Vashem honored this remarkable person's family uh, for what they did in stepping up and saving their lives. And again, you know, Albania is an interesting place. There's this notion of what they call Besa, which is a notion that everything is open, that there is a friendliness and a decency that's given to all people, whether you're Jew or Christian or whatever it may be. In fact, I actually visited a church there run by redemptionists. And in this church, you could see the remarkable care that is being given, not just for their fellow Christians, but for Muslims, uh, for other kinds, for whoever it may be. We saw the Bekashti, I've said it wrong, you see in a previous post, but this order of, of uh, well, Islam with the, the Baba Mondi, who is responsible for 150 million uh, Muslims around the world. And again, when you're able to put these things together and understand, and we're able to step back and look at the purity of each religion as it is, there's such an incredible beauty and understanding. And really, to be able to take time and to meet with these Muslim righteous uh, was something, and the Albanian righteous, was something that, that will forever be with me. Uh, it was so powerful and important of an experience that from the depths, we've actually decided to step up and to look at doing more in the Balkan countries. Because these stories aren't known, at least not to me. Um, I'm wondering whether a lot of you who are viewing this right now would have known about these stories or would have heard about them. Uh, but really, this isn't something that a lot of us were educated on or understand about. So once again, to meet with the Muslim righteous was something that was incredibly powerful. And as I said, we're so inspired to be working out in um, Albania uh, and in the other countries that we're actually going to be pushing forward and doing a lot more work there. Uh, we're incredibly honored uh, that we're going to be bringing on a good friend, Flory, um, who is a wonderful person. Flory is going to be joining our team as the director of From the Depths to the Balkan Countries, where we're going to be working with the righteous in Albania, in Kosovo, in Serbia, uh, in all the different countries in the region. We're going to be looking for them. We're going to be meeting with them and telling their stories. In January, we're going to be hosting an incredibly important event out in uh, Tirana, uh, the capital of Albania. And there in Tirana, we're going to be, again, telling this story. We're going to be meeting these people and we're going to be making sure that their stories are told and remembered for history. And whilst during that as well, we're going to be pushing forward and we're actually going to be taking and bringing some new taxis. Uh, we're going to be taking two of our silent hero taxis of these iconic London taxis out to Albania, where they'll serve as free rides for uh, the three uh, still living Albanian righteous, as well as others who didn't receive accreditation from Yad Vashem for whatever reason. But we're going to be pushing forward with that. And so really, in terms of the work that we're doing here at From the Depths, we're incredibly blessed. You know, we have a remarkable event that's coming up on November 14th with such great friends. The event's being hosted by the amazing uh, Aki Avni, an incredible Israeli actor. We're going to be hosting and having here Dean Kane with us, who played Superman, um, the amazing young fantastic Polish actor uh, Alan Anders will be joining us as well where we're going to be stepping up and again honoring and taking care and doing everything that we can to make sure these people are taken care of and in addition to all of this tomorrow evening starts Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is the day of atonement this is where we Jews uh, fast for 24 hours we shut down our phones our televisions and usually go to the synagogue and use it as a time of introspection to understand and to look at what we are and to really start taking care of ourselves. And part of this process is asking for forgiveness. Now, if I was to individually have to ask everybody for forgiveness, I'd be here till tomorrow and I'd be going through an incredibly long list of people I have to say sorry to. But I think for me, one of the most important factors of me apologizing right now is going to be apologizing to people who I haven't been able to stay in touch with. 
many, many people reach out to me all the time. And I'm really not the best in getting back to people. This is something that I'm sorry for and something that I'm going to, uh, I'm working on and hope to get better with. But for those of you who are watching this who may have reached out to me and I didn't get back to you, I'm sorry. I really, really am sorry. Please reach out to me again. I'll do everything I can to answer your questions, to partner with you, to work with you, to help you. Whatever you need, I'm here. So for that, I'm very sorry. For the rest of you who I have to apologize to, again, the list is really never ending. So there's a general apology that I'll give here right now um, to every single person who I may have offended. Uh, if I offended you on purpose or if I offended you by mistake, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to. Uh, I harbor no bad feelings towards anyone for anything. I truly believe that life is too short. So again, once again, if I've done anything that's wrong, I'm sorry. I truly deeply apologize to you in the spirit of Yom Kippur, which is coming tomorrow. I ask you all kindly for forgiveness. Um, please do forgive me for whatever I've done wrong. Um, but again, um, join us and continue sort of following this journey that we're on. November 14th here in Warsaw, we're going to be having the most amazingly powerful and important event. Um, we're so honored that we've even partnered with, I won't say too much now, uh, but we've partnered with incredible people where we're going to be telling the stories. We have amazing friends coming to this event, righteous from Poland, righteous from Belarus. We have the former foreign minister of uh, Albania, who will be joining us here, the son of the righteous, to tell his family story. All of this is part of making sure that none of us forget this history. Because whilst it's crucially important that we don't forget the stories of the past when it comes to remembering the six million Jews, the three million Poles, and millions and millions of others murdered for their religion, I am absolutely certain that just as important as remembering those who were killed, we have to remember and honor those who stepped up to do the right thing at the time. Because their stories are equally as valuable and equally as important when it comes to educating our future generations. My children behind me on the wall over there, that's the education that I love and I inspire to be able to give them. When my children were here in Poland recently, I took them to meet with Righteous. This is exactly what I am hoping to do and trying to do and fighting to do. It's to make sure that we continue to tell these people's stories. And most of them are very, very old. Just as we're speaking now, I'm getting messages from my friends in Albania about some of the Albanian righteous who we've invited to be with here at us on this event, who unfortunately are unable to come because of health reasons. Again, these are people in their 90s. It's not easy for them to travel. It's not easy for them to do things. Unfortunately, the wife of the righteous is going blind. She needs medication that costs 750 euros every single month. If she doesn't do that, she's going to lose her eyesight. It was horrendous to hear. But, you know, in Albania, a country where the average wage or, or if they're lucky, is going to be about three to four hundred euros, seven hundred and fifty dollars a month is unheard of. And if it's not for us to step up in these situations, all these years later, me as a 33 year old, being able to honor a 90 year old woman who, who, who her family also taught, she told us a story how they risked their lives to save Jews in Kosovo. But her husband's a recognized righteous amongst the nations. Isn't it for us to step up in these times? Isn't this the example that I should be giving my children on how to behave and what to do? So there's so much to think about and so much to do and so many powerful and positive things that all of us can take on ourselves. Um, and join us and take part in this. Again, you know, look, we, I run a foundation. We always need financial help, but it's not just that. It's also help us share these stories, help us push them far and wide, help us however you can in making sure that this history isn't just not forgotten, but is remembered forever as well. So again, for the final time, and from the bottom of my heart, a night before Yom Kippur, for anybody who I've done anything wrong to, I apologize deeply and profoundly, I'm sorry. Um, and for everyone who I haven't, and who's watching this and thinking Johnny's done nothing wrong, thank you. All the best. From Warsaw, good night.